much of what I've been doing my whole career. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> then you'll fit right in. So anyway. Get camera and just send me on an assignment and I'll pull back as much as I can get. Cut you some. Deal. You heard it right here on Talk Story Unscripted. Good morning, or I should say aloha, everyone. Welcome back to Talk Story. My name is Pete. And I'm Doug. And we have... Pete. We have somebody who's like family to us. This is Nate Carl down below. He's a cinematographer. And Nate, so good to see you. How you doing, man? Top of the morning, boys. I definitely miss you guys. It's been a while. It too long. Been a while. Yeah, too way long. too long. So Nate is the founder of Freedom Media right here in Hawaii. And uh, he does fantastic work, cinematographer. And he does a lot of work for Kalo TV. So Nate. How is the whole COVID thing going? Has it affected your work? Are you limited? Are you just getting through it? You're pushing through? What's happening? Yeah, of course it's affected my work. I mean, mostly all the event stuff I usually shoot, especially the summer, it completely wiped out. Um, it's been a little challenging, I would say, just, you know, I mean, just all around. I mean, it's been a blessing too, though, because I got to spend a lot of time with my son and of course my wife home. Um, and the challenge of being a, a teacher now for, you know, just at, for at home schooling, that's, that's a little bit of a challenge, but it's been rewarding too to see my son develop further because he's only in first grade or he just finished first grade. So on to second and, uh, pros and cons, you know, um, you know, the lack of you know, income of course is the biggest hurt. Uh, and then just being kind of confined a bit, you know, not being able to go shoot. And, uh, and of course, like, all the stuff I used to love doing with you guys, it's been on the back burner. It's yeah. Too much work. Yeah. Well, dude, you know what? We should be doing like a, a Hawaii or a Waikiki zombie apocalypse movie right now. It's like crazy, <laughs> right? Everything's yeah. empty. Right. Did you see the uh, drone video I did of just flying over Waikiki when it was empty? I posted it on YouTube. It's pretty popular. Just like yeah. COVID-19, empty Waikiki, like you'll, you know, flashback in time kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that's like the breaches are just completely cleared it's but it's still the streets are still clear there's like i drove through there a couple nights ago and it was like maybe 20 people and all like yeah. it. it's pretty boarded up still so yeah. uh, I mean, it's definitely way busier than it was of course because they opened it back up for all the locals right so take advantage you know to go back and enjoy those beaches now yes so kidding yeah so true well speaking of hawaii i gotta ask you nate uh, as being a cinematographer um what is your favorite thing what is the favorite aspect of filming in Hawaii for you? Oh, I mean, of course, I see the geography. I mean, the topography of this place. And this is a quick backstory was, you know, my, my start as a photographer was with the Navy. I was a Navy salvage diver. But my, my skill for the Navy was it was called a photographer's mate. Um, so I went to a formal training as a still photographer with film. And this was right before the digital age came upon us. And literally the last curriculum in the class was like Photoshop and digital cameras. And uh, they were pretty kind of old um, proprietary kind of DSLRs that were made by Nikon. And then they had this Kodak uh, processing like attachment to it. It was really interesting. Mm. And then, of course, you know, digital took over like a year after. This was back in 2002 when I went to photography school. And then I went to Navy dive school. Um, I, re I was second in my class, so I got to pick, you know, I was a number two position. The number one guy, there was only one set of orders to Hawaii. And he uh, I was surprised he didn't take it. You know, it was too, it was for Ford Island. It was at the Navy dive school there. It was a scuba school. And, um, you know, I couldn't believe he didn't take it. So I, I had second pick. I was like, Oh, I'm going to Pearl Harbor. I, I could all scrape barnacles. I don't care. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Cause I was a surfer too, you know, but I always knew the Mecca of surfing was here, you know, and of course just why everything I've never been here before. Long story short, I did uh, two, two tours Pearl Harbor uh, back to back. And my whole uh, original foundation was as an underwater photographer. But I did some land stuff too. And I just fell in love with it. You know, it's part of the reason why I got out of the Navy is I fell in love with more um, creative things with behind the camera and filmmaking. I transitioned into doing video from stills. And uh, of course, you know, back to your question was those elements of like being in the crystal clear water, shooting at pipeline, shooting just all kinds of different projects that I've been blessed, thankfully, you know, from the Lord just gave me a lot of opportunity. And a lot of it came actually from just volunteering for different nonprofits, going to help various nonprofits because I saw the need, you know, like things I believed in. One was access, surf, yeah. you know, people with um, disabilities and uh, getting back in the water. I mean, any kind of ailment, struggles people may be having, whether it's PTSD, a soldier or a 
someone who's just born, you know, multiple sclerosis or someone who gets paralyzed, they do everything for any blood, for any age. And I really saw what it was to surf. And like, you know, I, I literally went like right when they started, like the first couple of weeks, there was like one little tent, four surfboards. And then I just was like, Hey, I want to help you guys. I want to shoot pictures and I want to say, make some videos. Let's get this thing big. I really believe in it. You know? And I really, um, I think that was the first time I'd ever truly served in a way of like, first it was me paddling people out, getting them off boards, helping them. And then I said, gosh, let's, let's promote this. So I'll shoot some pics. Still helped with the aspect of getting them off the board and all that. Right. And uh, saw it really just grow and grow and grow and grow. <clears throat> we got involved with the Wounded Warrior Project for soldiers. Um, got to hear some amazing testimonies, guys saying how they were suicidal that morning. And wow. then said that we gave them a reason to live from the ocean. Yeah. You know, and just like, of course, all those times being able to share my own testimony with the Lord and how he's changed my heart and like why he brought me there. Back up a bit. What are you wearing there? What is that? Oh, yeah. This is the, uh, the original Kahlo. Yeah. 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 Oh, dude. Old school. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Oh, it's brand new. I know. It had the Kahlo leaf back in the day. I love it. Yeah, man. And it, yeah, it says on the back says where the, uh, where the word is heard. It's a small, love not on this one, but the original. <laughs> so do you, do you have like a, um, a favorite hidden spot in Hawaii that you, nobody else knows about that you love to film? A hidden spot. Um, I usually like to shoot places that aren't as inhabited, like say the end of the road on the west side or the end of the road on the north shore on the west side, like Mokalei, uh, Yokohama Bay. I like trying to pull in some of those backdrops, you know, those dramatic mountains towering to the ocean. Um, of course, you know, since I started shooting with my drone, just the aerial stuff is like, that's one of my biggest, uh, of course it was water. You know, I still love shooting the water. Not enough of my projects call for me shooting the water. I really miss that. I haven't shot in the water that much. Nate, I got to tell you, man, two of my lenses are falling apart thanks to the, the weather <laughs> of Hawaii. It's like, what yeah, is going on? I can really, you know, I can it's crazy, right? So there's some challenges shooting here. You know, that's obviously a physical thing. But what are some of the challenges that you find in shooting here in Hawaii? Well, you mentioned the main one was the, the salt, you know, salty air. I've had camera housings flood, um, not diving, surprising, but from shooting, shooting at pipeline. And it was I, user error. It wasn't from like a big wave smashing it. It was like I didn't tighten up the little wing nuts oh. or I over tightened them. So it's like this fine line of not tight enough or you know, just too tight. Right. Over tighten one side, you know, um, also just the salty air, I think, just shooting on the beach. Uh, the other thing that I challenge with the video, particularly, you guys probably know this, is when the light roller coasters on you. Mm -hmm. Say you're shooting an interview outside, it's sunny, and like midway through, or, but then it goes cloudy on you, and it yes. just goes crazy dark, and, and it just doesn't, you know, when you're shooting in manual mode, which is more professional, it's hard to compensate on that exposure, gain or loss. What are the things, some, something that you could do as a cinematographer, how do you deal with that? Well, is there something that we could do to make that? Well, usually what I'll do, if I don't want to mess with the shutter and aperture, which you usually don't want to mess with, you want to keep the same look, is keep your, put your ISO on auto. Mm. You know? And it won't affect it as much if you're outside versus inside, because inside you'll get real grainy, you know, but only time you would have a roller coaster inside is safe if you're just using all natural light from a window, and it's sunny, but you're inside, and it's, it's getting tons of nice light, and then it goes cloudy while you're shooting that same interview. And then your ISO goes from, say, like 1,200 to like 3,200, and then uh -huh. it gets grainy. You know, you get that pixelated look green, you know. Yeah. A lot of the high-end cameras, you don't have to worry about it, say, like a red or something like that. But I, I, I haven't been able to with those cameras. Yeah. <laughs> Me both, man. Yeah, yeah. One day, one day. That's right. Uh, the DSLRs do a great enough job. You know, yeah. it's a little, it's okay. I hear you. And they're way more portable, way more easy to set up. And, well, you've done a lot of projects. As a matter of fact, uh, Nate, you and I worked on a few corporate things together. I actually hired you. Yeah, you're not calling that. me boss. That was a fun dude. one. That was a yeah, fun that shoot. was pretty crazy fun. And uh, and as a matter of fact, the drone work was great. And everybody loved it. Uh, but the, you know, the thing I wanted to ask you is: there a standout project that you've done that really resonates with you from a cinema cinematography point of view? Standout project. Well, of course, everything. And this is all honesty. Everything I've done with Kahlo has been the most standout, heartfelt, meaningful, impactful. And the same thing with uh, any like with um, accessor. You know, there's a lot of meaning, there's purpose behind it. You're motivating people. You're, you're inspiring people. You know, you're capturing true heartfelt testimonies. It's like 
that's relatable, that people can really feel, you know, um, commercial work, I'd say the first photo I ever shot, or the first photo I ever sold, sorry, was to Billabong. I was surprised and I only managed to sell it to Billabong because I happened to know my, my, one of my best friend's wife's was a graphic designer for Billabong. So she knew the right person for me to send the photo to, because you can go on Billabong's website, but you never even get, get that guy's email, you know? <laughs> and like, so I sold a photo. <laughs> It was uh, for a local magazine called Free Surf. It was a double page spread opening of the magazine when you open it. It's the first one there. <clears throat> and uh, he, you know, the guy asked me, how much you want for it? And you never know what you're gonna get paid. It's like, I didn't even know what to charge. I was just like, yeah. I said, I, well, I knew they owned DeKine because Billabong owns a lot of different companies like DeKine, Von Zipper, a few other companies. But DeKine makes some of the best camera bags and travel bags out there. And they make, I mean, some really awesome stuff. You know, so I, like, I told him, hey, how about we just trade for some Dekine gear? I listed those things I just mentioned. I want their camera bag, I want their travel bag. And he was like, that's it? And I was like, okay, well, whatever else you want to throw in. So he, literally, <laughs> yeah. he, literally, he literally sends me no, those things. And they're, they're, they're valued at like, that was valued about 700 bucks or something. I don't know. Wow. And it was, only, it was a one-time use only. They're only going to use the picture for this one ad. They weren't gonna, it wasn't a buyout. Buyout's a lot different. Yeah. They'll, they'll put it everywhere. You usually get a lot more money for it. Long story short, it's going to be a box full of stuff. Billabong, sunglasses, shoes, I mean, stickers, shorts. I was just like, I was blown away, like, and the, the kind bags, you know. <laughs> and it was cool. It was a cool experience. Yeah, well, wow. that's how you got that expensive shirt. I mean, you know, no one has that shirt you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. That thing's worth like 20 yeah. grand. Is this that is right? all volunteer stuff right here. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Forget yeah. Gucci, dude. I mean, you've got, yeah. you're set up. Yeah. Right. Well, so, you know, I'm, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, you know, you mentioned the Kahlo experiences and, um, you know, it's been, I've been working with you with Kahlo stuff for about the past four years yeah. um, and multiple projects throughout the, throughout the time. I'll say working with you, you know, some of the projects that really, that really stood out to me was like River of Life, working on that with you. Yeah. That was a powerful. I agree 100%. Project. Out of all of them, that one was the most powerful to me, you know, um, the interviews, seeing what true selflessness is with believers, yeah. all those interviews we did. And I said, wow, this is really what it means to be a Christian. Yeah. You know, like, and it actually convicted me of like, I'm not doing enough. You know, like, yes, we're there. Yes. We're helping promote them. We're capturing these testimonies. I mean, I just remember like literally crying during some of those heavy testimonies you guys remember like crying with the people. And I've never done that. You know, that's even part of my own testimony is I, I had a, such a hardened heart before God got a hold of it and softened it. And like now, like things like that, were like, I mean, I'll just be crying with people, you know? Right. And, uh, yeah, there was some power. Yeah, that one. Absolutely. That yeah. one for sure. Um, all of them been amazing, you know, but that yeah. one really is a standout. I agree with you on that one. Some of the, <laughs> some of the shots from Pete's video, uh, of the, the surf competition, the pipeline, so yeah. come, those shots were phenomenal. I was like, yeah, man, thanks. you nailed it, man. Thanks, thanks. That was fun. That was shooting my GH5 in slow motion. Slow motion always adds yeah, so much like, so drama. That, you know, it's like, wow, it's just somebody can be walking and you're like, wow, it looks yeah. amazing. Like, it's just somebody walking, but it's in slow motion. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. That was actually the first day I met you, Nate, when we were shooting that thing. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, and it was such a great day. It was like, uh, I don't know. I think was it the final day at uh, Pipe was, Masters? Yeah, it was, it was great. It was such was a good. Cool. I love the walk and talk we did too. That was really cool. That was yeah, cool. a lot of great moments, man. I mean, a lot of things I'm just remembering because you guys are talking about it. Like, I love the interview we did with you, Pete, walking down the beach, and the light was phenomenal, and like the, the water almost came and washed us away. The waves coming up. Yeah, was that was so fun. Mind. I remember yeah. looking at you though, thinking, "Oh my gosh, that gimbal's not light." <laughs> Dude, you're getting an arm workout, man. It is. It's yeah. Oh, anything longer than a minute or two, and you're like shaking, like oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you hurry up, Pete, and say whatever you're gonna say a lot? <laughs> I know. Like in my mind, I'm like, come on, like speed it up, speed it up. You know? I know. That, I've done that. Something that uh, um, Pete has always commented on is when we were filming the the window washer with with Dino and oh. the, the drone shots that you got that day. Uh, those were spectacular as well. Yeah, thanks, thanks. That was a great shoot as well. I know. Yeah. I'm just thinking back on all of them now. Like, 
I just love all the reflective windows and the guys hanging down and you're like, I don't know if you were hovering, I can't remember now, but or moving in or out. And it's just like, oh, that looks, that looks so cool. It's such a great yeah. shot. And for Doug going over the side with the man, I was like, yeah. that was sketchy. And I can, you can sense it. I mean, with the camera and your, your own testimony, you know, I was like, of course you're going over like, you're, how high are we up? 200 feet? I don't even know, 300? Yeah, uh, I think it was about 200 feet, yeah. If you're 20 stories up, you're 20, 200 feet up. For most right. Part, 10 foot of story, for more or less. You yeah. know what, Nate? You know what, Nate? You know what we should have done? This is really, why didn't we think of this? We should have thrown Doug in with like a, a, I don't know, a 12 foot longboard into pipe, right? <laughs> On that day, mic him up. Yeah, so cool. <laughs> uh, I, I think I have to be somewhere. Yeah. So I got a, I got a story for you real quick on that on pipe because I, I used to shoot in the water a lot of pipe and I had one day where I had my kind of my life flash in front of my eyes and I wondered if it was worth it because I had I had just had a kid. Um, I took you know pipe is obviously one of the most dangerous ways in the world. And it's not. Um, I would shoot multiple different kind of setups, usually long lens. Like a long lens means like a. 70 to 200 millimeter from the channel, which the channel is right on the end of the wave. Yeah. The pipeline is known for different angle swells. You'll get waves that actually will shift over into that end section, break right in it. Wow. And, it'll, and uh, I had a decent size one that we call a six footer in Hawaiian, which is about a 12 foot wave, 12 foot face. And uh, I remember when I, I, it was coming, I saw it and it was like bearing down on my head. As soon as I went underwater, I was literally in like waist deep water. And it's reef, like a solid slab of rock, you know? And I was like, I immediately thought this isn't going to be good because it was about to just square, you know, the big lip right on my head. Like yes. maybe, about, maybe three feet out in front of me, enough of the explosion where it explodes. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, as when the lip hit, all I heard was <laughs> of the compression, the concussion. It was, and it, it, I had the worst beating I've ever had in my life surfing, shooting, anything full somersaulting rag it like the most violent beat down I've ever had in my life. And I'm keep in mind, I'm holding a camera with a lens on this big that probably weighs, you know, 15, 20 pounds in one hand, one hand on the reef down. Like, so I'm like swimming under, hand on the reef and then just, whoa. I mean, just oh, can you imagine somersaulting the most violently flailing rag doll I've ever had. Like I got hit by a, tr a truck. Jeez. And a drug underwater, like the length of, I don't even know, 50 yards, 60 yards, underwater, flipping the whole way. And I could not believe that camera didn't crack me in the face, the head, yeah. you know, whatever. Thank God. I was like, guardian angel moment? I, I'm assuming because I, so many, there's been guys who died, photographers who oh, died at Pipeline. Yeah. No way. At smaller days, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that was only a six footer. I'm like, I can't imagine an eight, 10, 12 footer. I probably would have been dead. So I literally, yeah. I, I was starred and my head was ringing. Yeah. Like literally when people, you know, they're like, oh, that guy got his bell rung when he gets punched by a boxer yeah. or whatever. Never in my life have I had my bell rung until that moment. And it, wow. it was like literally yeah. as I surfaced and I was starred and I just kind of like, you know, what I consider swimming, <laughs> drifted up to the beach. And I, I was just rattled. I was like, okay, I think I might be done. I'm shooting. <laughs> Yeah. That's and also you know, known like, as that's known like, as the walk of shame, right? Walk of shame. Yeah, usually it's like if you can't make it out, you get pulled all the way down the beach and you yeah. have to come back in because you can't make it back out the other channel. Yeah. So like, you, yeah. Well, I mean I used that to was humbling. It was humbling. Oh, beautiful times. I used to live what about a mile away from that. And the one way I would know that the surf was up is when I heard the ambulance. Like, okay, yeah. it's big. Um, mm. You know, and that, that's the way you knew that pipe was going or even sunset yeah. or whatever. That's eerie. Yeah. I, agree. I still miss shooting the water. I don't know if I would uh, go. It was a big day of pipe when I was out there. It was like eight to 10 Hawaiian. Wow. And I was on the corner, like I said, and it was like just a medium sized one that came through and just unloaded right on me where I was at. And it happens all the time with other photographers too. Yeah. It was just, I was just like, yeah, I don't know. Is it worth it? <laughs> Because you go and you shoot all those pictures and you got to come home, you have to process them all, go through them all, figure out who they all are. And then you submit <laughs> all those pictures to all the different companies in hopes of selling something. Uh, yeah. And I would happen, you know, you'd go a full day work, shoot, send out, and you get maybe, you know, 5%, 10% replies just saying, thanks, but we already have you know, our own photographers or, you know, we already, you know, we got a little bit better angle around out of this time or we don't have the budget or whatever it is. You know, yeah. It's so, so much. Nice. 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 Nice
Yeah. Well, you know, so you love action photography, action cinematography. Uh, is there something when you think about the future, is there one thing that you would love to go do shoot? Is there like a, a dream project that you would love to do? You know, I've seen a lot of these Christian films lately that are amazing. You know, um, I think for me, even if it's us who puts together, you know, I know the Lord's been putting a lot of different um, projects on my heart, you know, like waking up in the middle of the night thinking of ideas and things we can engage the secular audience with, but also further equip believers in, uh, you know, but I would love to be involved in one of the big Christian films that we've been seeing, you know, even like um, just the documentary about Christ that we've seen recently that came out a couple of years ago, all the, the different series, I mean, done incredibly well, you know, um, of course there's some Christian films that are, a little bit, the acting may be a little bit cheesy, but the story is there, you know? So I like, I, I think it's come a long way. Yeah. yeah you know, um, I would just be in love. Anything involved, like going back to the beginning, was just anything that has a meaning and purpose. You know, it's not one particular project, but I just say it. Just yeah. All of them. Yeah. I have to say, there was a time where we were talking quite a bit, texting each other, and you would always, always throw something at me. Dude, I just heard this song. I see it now. And you'd be explaining everything you'd see as you were yeah. yeah, and, and I still have all those things. I'm just kind of waiting for this coronavirus nightmare to end. And yeah. Yeah. No, kind of I, we're all together. And, you know, I kind of started writing a little bit of a storyline for a film awesome. called Holy War. And uh, it's literally that, you know, like, but, you know, the, the Christianity versus the Muslim thing that's been going on forever, you know, right. how one side believes the Isaac and the Ishmael, you know, like the, the differences in the brothers and why it came to be. And, you yeah. know, right. um, I, you know, I think a lot of time it's scenes that I see in my head, like a, yeah. something playing out, you know, I like, you know, I just, I hear some kind of music or I get some kind of vision God bless me with it. I just start writing yeah. and the details of it, you know, and how this can connect or how I can, connect with the audience, you know, how can we get at their heart, pull the heartstrings and really make them really think, you know, yeah. Yeah. About, about eternity, you know, yeah. just, that's the most important thing, you know, that what really happens the bonus it's about right now, having a relationship with God, you know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. I don't tell people, I said, heaven's the bonus, dude, it's about right now, like hearing from God, would you like to hear from God? Yeah, you know, or, of course, <laughs> would, you know, like yeah. you speak to you in your heart, you're not going to hear some audible sound from come from the sky, you're going to hear it in your heart, your psyche, you know, your conscious, yeah. subconscious. Yeah. That's good, man. Well, I know, I know we're running a little bit short on time, but we have just a few more questions we want to ask you. Sure. Um, you know, uh, tell us about, you mentioned the, the being trapped underwater. That was a pretty intense moment. But tell us about a, maybe a God moment of while you're filming something, you're looking through the lens, and as you're looking at the lens, you're going, wow, this is bigger than myself, like, like a God moment while you were filming. A lot of the interviews. Um, Majority, not majority, a lot of those interviews we did. But one particular moment, I was shooting a commercial project for Kalo, or sorry, Aqua Aston in Maui. They're pretty notorious of calling me a day out and saying, "Hey, can you go to Maui tomorrow?" And I'm all like, "They are so last minute, spur of the moment. A lot of times I can, sometimes I can't." So you know, with everything here in Hawaii, the elements, you know, the winds are going to be windy, it's going to be rainy. How's the weather going to be? Maui's the windiest island. So I don't know if you guys have been to Maui. So when you fly in, always it's the trades are like twice as hard as here. Yeah. Um, that's a big factor for flying drone is the trades. Okay. So long story short, I go over a late afternoon. The next day they call me, I'm going to spend the night in the resort, shoot that afternoon. When I fly in that evening to sunset, shoot the whole next morning, sunrise, all the rest of the day till like I fly back out in the afternoon. Well, I get there and it's rainy, cloudy. And I was, that's what I was worried about. I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of rainy. It's cloudy. It's gray. I, I didn't get anything that first afternoon, nothing usable. This is a resort video, so they want sunny, pretty, light winds. And I'm like, just, and I told them, like, it's going to be windy. It's not going to be that great. Do what you can do. Just we need it done. Okay. Okay, so the next morning, one of their uh, guys from corporate comes over to kind of kind of oversee it. You know, he, like, just make, checking in and just kind of making sure we're getting all the shots they want. It's still rainy, cloudy, gray. Oh. And I'm like, man, you know, like, so we go to breakfast. I have no idea if this guy's, if this guy's a believer or not, so I'm like, Breakfast just comes. I say, hey, I'm going to pray. Let's pray over breakfast, and I'm going to pray for good weather and stuff. And he's like, sure, sure, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> no joke. I mean, this is like clockwork. Like maybe minute after, as soon as I say, hey, man, thank you, Lord, I start cutting, and then it's like the, cloud, the sky clears, huge rainbow across the whole beach. Like, And I'll, I'll send you a picture so you can plug this video. So oh, I'm, yes. I'm not lying. And it was immediately, drop the food. I'll come back to eat it and just start shooting, you know, like, and it, but it stayed beautiful the rest of the day. And I was like, wow. 
And then I, sh- I had an awesome opportunity to share with them just the testimony about the scripture. It says, have not to ask, not in you know, prayer. And like, God loves to answer prayers if it's going to be honorable to him. And, you know, he knows what we really need. And it was just like one of those God moments where you're like, wow. You know, that was incredible. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, like, that is cool. Yeah, yeah, God showed up, man. That's so showed up. Man. I, I honestly thought it was going to be a wash. Like, we were, I was going to come back some other day because it was like super gray, windy, ugly. You know? Yeah. That's, That's really cool. So lifted. I was like, wow, what else can I pray about? <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Hey, so look, we're in the dying minutes of our show, our program, and I, I, you know what? We need to think about those that are watching that are young, aspiring cinematographers, right? And you've had some experience. I love what God's been doing in your life. So what are some of the things that you, if you could share with somebody who's young, wants to do something, loves action, loves getting in there in the middle of it, what's the one thing you would share with them? You put yourself out there. I mean, just find what you love to shoot, you know, and just make yourself available. Like I said about contact and nonprofits and just like, I I didn't do with any kind of thing about trying to be famous. And I think that's one of the problems we see with this generation of kids, my nieces and nephews included. I've had kids tell me, I I ask them that, what do you want to do? What do you want to shoot? What do you want to create? What do you have to offer? Like, what are you going to create? that's going to help people or are you going to create like do it yourself videos? Are you going to do, and they're like, oh, I don't know, I just want to get famous. And I'm all like, you're never going to, it's never going to be famous. <laughs> yeah. like, people are going to see right through it. So it's like, you know, you got to find what you really are truly passionate about. You know, and I think as a believer, God will give you that. He'll give you, as you guys know, he's one to give us a purpose. You know, and um, yeah, everyone's blessed with gifts, you know, and where you use them to bless others. You know, to serve others, you know, I mean, that's always been my motto of my own company was like, mm. you know, stoke people out by either capturing their moments, their special day, whether it's a wedding or like mm. those documentaries that we're doing those interviews, you know, but then, you know, share that with others. You know? <clears throat> my passion was initially with like, you know, shooting the water and surfing, but then God said, there's a, he told me and showed me there's way more to this gift that I've given you that you can really bless people. You know, so it's like creating more like an idol of like the surf idol kind of thing. <clears throat> oh, that's good, man. Anything is going to be honorable to him, you know, and then just blessing others. Like I said, so it's about like how much joy you get when you're serving others. You know, like yeah. I've heard it for years before I finally started doing it from churches and pastors. Yeah. And like, there's no greater joy. I would, and I would see it and hear it. And then I finally experienced it you know, by serving, you know. You and Pastor Sam by like bring it, leading someone to the Lord. Wait till you lead your first person to the Lord, and like that's as a pastor they, they become like not necessarily obsessed. It becomes like I'm I'm saving people, you know. And essentially, that's what we are kind of we are doing here at Colorado. Yeah, you're inspiring people. Yeah, you're motivating. You're spurring them on. You're, that's you're, it. you're strengthening their faiths and yeah. what they already believe. Yeah, that's it's so good. Awesome, Nate. Well, you know what? We we uh, we need to get together. I wish we had more time. Yeah, and, uh, this just means that we've got to commit, dude. We got to get together. Look, uh, we'll announce it to you and anybody watching. We've been talking about doing a Call of Film Festival, where people oh, nice. can yeah people can uh, bring their film, make a film, and then we can submit it and. Now, there's a lot of things we're talking about right now, and it's just a really simple, small idea that's really blowing up, and it's exciting. I so, it. Nate, dude, you got to get that script down, and we got to film I this. Agree. Thing. We've got some ideas and shorts that we want to do too. So, so this is not the end. And for those of you who are watching, keep your eyes open for this. We really want to do this. It's a great opportunity to share a story. To, like you said, you know, to share the good news, right? And yeah. uh, that's what it's all about. Especially right now. This- yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Very needed. So thanks so much for your time, Nate. And uh, next time we're not going to see you in this Zoom call. We're just going to have to go out and shoot something, man. That's it, brothers. Appreciate uh, it. Yeah. God bless you. And and, uh, may the Lord continue to use you. And for those of you guys watching, check out his site, uh, his YouTube channel. Check out some of his footage. And uh, until next time, aloha. Thanks, guys. God bless, guys.